Hi folks, welcome to this brief demonstration of the SAX Tutor program. Before we begin, you can see that we're using the unregistered copy here. Don't worry too much about that. The unregistered copy has got pretty much all the facilities there. A couple of bits are missing. You can't play the blue scales, and uh, you can't print so much as you can in the registered version. But you'll probably only need those facilities when you get a bit further into your sax playing. So we'll clear that. Um, let's take a look at the main screen. So the reason that Sax Tutor really exists is to teach people how to play the sax and particularly which fingerings to use for any particular note. So the left hand picture here, the sax key picture, tells you with a red where a, pr a key is depressed and where white shows a key that's not pressed. Um, in this particular demo we're showing C at the moment. As you can see on the staff here, middle C is showing in green and middle C here, you can see the yellow by the way just demonstrates that we're on middle C. You can also see that the red notes are showing how that note will sound in its transposed form. If we change instruments using these radio buttons here, you can see that the transpose position changes. Um, we'll stick with alto for this test I think. Um, the real power of sax tutor, however, comes into play when you start clicking on the star. So here I have, I, I've clicked on A, uh, the notes show me A, the keyboard show me A, and fantastic, there you go, there's the fingering position for A on a saxophone. Uh, you can sharpen or flatten, so you can see the different fingerings as you go, hopefully that all makes sense. You can also see here uh, what's written versus what's transposed, so it kind of really helps if you're trying to figure out and transpose a piece of music, this can be a really cool way to understand exactly what's going on for any particular instrument. But the power of Sax Tutor really lies in its ability to be able to demonstrate scales for you. So if we click on the Scales button, you can choose a scale. Um, some of them are greyed out. Again, remember, this is the unregistered version, so they would come into play if it was registered. Let's pick the C major scale key. Here we go. And now we have a slightly different screen. We're showing C major up top here. And we've got these five buttons. Uh, let's start by pressing Start. Hopefully you can hear there that the sax tutor is just, I'll stop that for a second, rotating through the scale. And as it rotates through, it shows you the fingering for each position on the scale. This is a great way to be able to kind of lock into memory the basics for any particular scale. And if you're confused, if you're more keyboard orientated or, or more musically notation oriented, you can see all three things on screen at any one time. Hopefully that makes some sense. Um, if we go back up here, we can select other scales, maybe, uh, let's say, uh, D major, why not? And again, we can press Start, which will play that. But there's a couple of other things to show you. You can click on Speed, and you can make this faster. Um, every one in this box is one-tenth of a second, roughly. So if I set one, this should make it quite fast. When I first set this up, I didn't think I'd ever get to that speed, but nowadays I can pretty much match that if I need to. You can also loop a scale if you want to. Maybe you want to play a scale ten times to really get it in your head. You just set the number of times you want it to loop using this button here. So hopefully that makes some sense to you now. Um, let me just go briefly through the menu for you uh, up the top here. In the file menu, you can also load your own user-defined patterns. I've put a couple in here already just to show you how it works and there's more information on the file format for user-defined patterns in the SAX guide PDF or in the help file that's provided. So here we go, you can now see I've got a user-defined set just to show you. Kind of noisy and busy but that gives you an idea of how things work. I'm going to put this speed back to 10 in case we play again so that it's a little easier for everyone. Um, in the print menu, there are a number of areas that can be printed. You can see here, some are greyed out. Again, this is the unregistered version. If you want to learn more about registering, go to the website saxtutor.co.uk. Uh, if you want to learn anything else, actually, you'll find that there as well. Uh, the instrument menu gives you the choice to switch between instruments, as to do the radio buttons on the side here. So. Um, the sounds menu here gives you access over the noises that you're hearing in the background so you can change the patch, the volume, the MIDI channel that it's coming through and you can also test it if you wish. The info menu gives you a few cool bits of information, some more coming in the registered version 
But if we take the reed, for example, you've got six or seven tool tips here, depending on the reed that you, you can use. I'll, I'll leave you to explore those in more detail later. The help file needs special attention. Yes, you can use help in here. Uh, there is a help file. It's fully context driven. Unfortunately, Windows, uh, Microsoft have decided to phase out the use of that help file. So for people using Vista and Windows 7, you have to re-enable it by visiting the Microsoft website and downloading a patch. If, if you're not bothered about doing that kind of stuff, if you don't want to do that, you can also now use the PDF guide that's provided with Sax Tutor, and you'll find that in the Start menu alongside Sax Tutor. Uh, you'll also, by the way, find the Uninstall if you need it. And then finally, of course, if you want to register, uh, come to the website, make a donation, or use the registration button. You pop your email address in, you pop in an unlock code that we'll provide you, and the program gets registered for you. So I'm hoping that that's making sense to everyone. Um, I'll just bring this back to the main menu. I think I've covered everything. The one thing that really you might be interested in that many people miss out on is that... If you go to the upper notes, the altissimo notes, they're all loaded in the unregistered version. So if you're trying to figure out how to extend the range of the saxophone, this is a great way to find a note that you're trying to play. And then using the variation buttons, you can see the various formats that have worked for other players in the past. I spent a lot of time gathering these together, got information from the internet, from old books. You, you'd be amazed how many different variations we found. They've all been proven to play by someone or another. In my case, I can play most of them. I'm hoping that you, with a little bit of practice, will be able to do likewise. Anyway, that's a, that's a brief run for you. I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you'd like to learn any more, then just come visit us at the website, www.saxtutor.co.uk. And I look forward to hearing from you by email or something like that fairly soon.